happening? What's happening? What's happening? This your man, Chris Watts. You already know off top. We got to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. You know, I got to recognize my beautiful queen, Allie Watts, and my three beautiful girls, Antoinette, Annalise, and Alexi. I love them so much. Before we get to today's video, let's start off with prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for your word. We pray that it shall not return back unto you void but it shall accomplish everything you have set forth to accomplish. I pray that it will land on good ground. Everyone that we hear this message, I pray that their hearts are good ground and that the seed, Lord, the enemy shall not come and take it, but this seed, your word, shall land in their heart and produce some 30, 60, and 100 fold, Father. So we give you all the glory and the honor. Pray that there is no distractions and that your people, Lord, will get something out of this message that we are about to share. We send your son, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth, man, we pray. Amen and man. If this is your first time stopping by the Nine Never Channel, baby, I simply want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. It is now a never. Hopefully you will go back and uh, watch all of our other videos and you will be encouraged by all of our other teachings. And hopefully you will hit that subscribe button, baby. Follow your boy on the Nine Never Journey. I believe life is all about Nine Never Moments. And no moments will dictate uh, our next level that we walk in destiny and relationships and business and career and everything as we trust God and step out by faith. Uh, to all of our consistent viewers and supporters, I just want to say thank you so much. We couldn't make it without you. You all have been a blessing. I appreciate your comments, your feedback. And uh, yeah, I just we, we just appreciate it, man. And we thank you all. So let's get to today's video. Today, I want to talk about relationships. Today, I want to talk about relationships mainly pertaining to uh, marriage. And my uh, main core audience I want to address today is the husbands. Woo! The husbands, uh, whether you whether you are a husband right now, or you're going to be a future husband, or whether you know a, uh, uh, you might have a brother or an uncle or a dad that want to hear, whoever it may be, we want to talk to the men today. So, ladies, wives, if you're married and you think this will be a blessing to your marriage with you and your husbands, uh, share the video with them. Because I want to come back and do one about wives as well. So we want to get to talking about today marriage and the family. And we want to talk about the role of the husband. Some key points I think husbands need to know about. Uh, some things, I, uh, the roles that um, us, that we as husbands need to walk in. You know, um, I don't consider myself a marriage expert. Uh, but I am happily married. And this year will be my 11th year of being married to my lovely wife. So I believe I got a little knowledge about, you know, marriage and being a husband and uh, being a father as well. And I just want to share some of my experiences, share some of my knowledge that I have gained. And it's uh, all biblically uh, all biblically uh, based what we're going to be talking about, how scriptures for everything. And I just want to share in a practical, real, raw, but relatable and relevant way. So one thing I think with uh, being married and being as a husband and, and as a man uh you know, one thing that we as men um, need or that we uh, expect to have is that reverence and that respect, which the Bible tells the wives to do. And I believe that a lot of men, you know, that a lot of us, we want to be the boss. We want to be the man. We want to be the man. But what I've come to find out is that, you know, a lot of men think that as long as that they're making the money and taking and and, be, and providing bills, pay food on the table, that's it. They good. They don't got to do nothing else. As long as I'm bringing home that bacon and that bread, hey, I'm making the money, taking care of us. We ain't starving. Bills are paid. I'm good. No, it's much more to being a husband and a man than that. And I come to find out that a lot of men, they want the authority, but they do not want the assignment. What? Let me get my Fiji water bottle. I'm talking good already. I'm coming for you today, fellas. Because everything that I'm going to talk about, I place those same expectations on me. I am by no means perfect. I still make mistakes. And one of the things I do with my wife every so often, I'll go to her and I ask her, how am I being as a husband? But the next, the, the, the next follow-up statement after that is, when I ask her, how am I being as a husband? I tell her, don't tell me anything that is good or positive. <laughs> I tell her to give me all constructive criticism. Don't tell me how good of a father I am. Don't tell me how good of a husband I am. I do this great, do this great. Tell me everything that I need to work on so that I can become better. It's all about becoming better. It's all about, become, it's all about growing as well. And I do that because I want to get better, I want to improve, and I want to be the MVH around here, the most valuable husband. Holler at you, boy. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I believe that a lot of men want the authority when it comes to the family or relationship, but they don't want the assignment. And the assignment is much more about walking in authority. You have to understand that when you become a husband, you have now elected to become the protector, the provider, and the, and the cultivator of your wife and that family. The protector, the provider, and the cultivator. You also have elected and chosen to become the king, the priest, and the prophet of your home. You have to understand the things that we're about to say. You are now the protector, the provider, the cultivator, and you are also now the king, priest, and prophet. And your wife and your kids, not only do they expect you to fulfill those roles to the best of your ability while being led by God, they 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 need you. They need you. They need you and want you to fulfill the roles. Because I believe that when a man is, is truly walking in his rightful position, according to the word of God, the household will flourish. Uh, the household will be in peace. Now, there will be moments of drama, arguments here and there, you know what I mean? But the majority of it, he'll know how to handle those situations that has high tension because he's basing how he's going to be as a husband and father according to the word. So let's get to this thing. You have to understand this. That a lot of men and a lot of husbands expect their wives to submit, which is cool because that's what the words say wives submit yourselves to your husband. But I see through a lot of times in a lot of marriages, that be one of the main things that the man talks about concerning his wife. She don't submit to me, she don't respect, she don't, remember. she ain't no submission. She, she, she's she strong, home. she's strong, will she's stubborn. But you know what? I come to find out, I come to find out that uh, uh the majority of women. Most of them, because you still have some that's a little, eh, 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 but most women don't have a problem submitting to their husband. What most women having a problem with is the fact that their husbands are not giving them anything to submit to. Come on, Prophet Watts. Who am I talking to already? Most women don't have a problem submitting. But what they have a problem with is that their husbands don't have anything on the table for them to submit to. You have to understand, a woman wants to submit to a man that has vision. A woman wants to submit to a man that has direction and guidance. A woman want, wants to submit to a man that has submitted himself to Christ. You got to give the wife and the woman something to submit to. Because if you don't have no vision, no direction, you're not submitted to the word, uh, the word of God, you're just out here and you're just living, doing anything, only thinking about the present, only worrying about taking care of the present. The woman wants to know, look, what is the plan for our family? Where are you taking us? It's much more than just paying $165.83 light bill. No, how, 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 what are you doing that's going to make our family better, that's going to cause us to grow, that's going to cause us to walk in everything that God has for me? As a man, you cannot be a lazy husband. I'm going to say it again. As a man, you cannot be a lazy husband. Just because you go to work five days a week does not mean that you are not lazy. Are you lazy as it pertains to destiny? Are you lazy as it pertains to cultivating your wife? Are you lazy as it pertains to raising your kids and spending time with them in the proper way and being a father? A lot of men want the authority, but they don't want the assignment. And we want to talk about that assignment. So let's transition as it, as it talks about one of the key things, one of the first points I want to make about husbands, I want to go to Ephesians chapter 5. And let's look what the Bible says. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. It says this, as it talks about husbands. It says, husbands, love your wives. And I'm reading from the Amplified, amplified Version. Excuse me. It says, husbands. Love your wives, seek the highest good for her, and surround her with a caring, unselfish love, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. Let me pause on verse 25 right there. So the first thing we see with the Bible, the first, points I, the first point I want to make for us husbands, it says, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Seek the highest good for her. Surround her with a caring, unselfish love. So the first point is this. Husbands, we are expected and commanded by God to love our wives just as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He gave his life up for her. 
The Bible says he gave himself up for her. Husbands, you got to give yourself up for your wife. Not just 30%, not just 53%, not just 67%, 100%. You got to give yourself up for your wife. Christ, he sacrificed his life so that the church may live. Husbands, you have to walk in a continuous state of sacrifice so that your family can live life at the level that God has for y'all to live in. I believe that the temperature of a household is set by the husband. And husband, God holds us responsible for the temperature and the direction by which our household is walking in. Look, it might not seem fair. If I can be transparent with you a lot of times, uh, me and my wife, we rarely argue, right? We, 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 I can't, we, I can't, I can't even remember if we even had a big fight before that just made us just want to just go out separate ways and don't want to do nothing with each other. You know what I mean? Now, we don't have our share, you know, of arguments, very few in between, but we don't have our share of arguments. And me as the husband, as the man, although we don't have those arguments, if something was to happen to our family, although my wife might have played a role, if something was to happen to our family, God is going to come to me as the head, just as he went to Adam first in the Garden of Eden. When Eve bit the fruit, and then she convinced Adam to eat the fruit, God came down. He didn't go to Eve. He went to Adam. So husbands, when drama and when things get high tension in your family, although both parties play a part, if things go south, God going to come to you and he going to ask you, what have you done? What has going on? And you can't be like Adam and say, that wife you gave me. No, 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 no. God say, you the man, right? You the head. You want to be the boss? CEOs take control of matters. So husbands, you are responsible for the temperature and the direction of your house. And me being transparent, me and my wife done gotten a couple arguments in times past, and I be praying to God. I'm like, God, look, God, I know what your words say, but this ain't fair. <laughs> I say, this ain't fair, God. Why I gotta be the one to go get it right? Why I gotta be the one that gotta get everything back in right order? Cause you the man, big dog. You wanna be the boss? You gotta take care of the battle. Many men want the authority, but they don't want the assignment. So then I find myself getting back in the word. Sacrificing, just as Christ sacrificed for the church. Find myself sacrificing my ego, my, my feelings, just so I can put life back into my family. I go to my wife, babe, let's talk about it. And sometimes she don't even want to talk. She'll just stay quiet. But I got to look past it, and I got to look in the spirit and make sure I take care of everything in the spirit. Because once I do that, she'll come around, as she always do. Go to a babe. I'm sorry. Look, I said some things that probably made you mad. You said some things that made me mad. I want to come first, and I want to humble myself and say, I apologize. Let's get this thing right. You know what I'm saying? Let's get past this thing. We disagree. Let's find a common ground and let's get back to loving on each other. Girl, I want to hug you and cuddle with you and watch a movie tonight. And she sometimes just be still trying to play hard to get. Mm, 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 mm. But she eventually come around because she got the Holy Ghost in her. And the Holy Ghost, when he do his job, she the uh, uh, she she comes back around when the spirit begin to move inside of her. So as the husband, we got to get the tone right. You, Christ sacrificed himself for the church. Husband, you got to sacrifice yourself for the wife and for the family. I remember one time my wife, she loves to eat Sonic Ice. And she, I was out and about one day and she asked me, can I bring back Sonic Ice for her? And I said, sure, babe, I got you. So I'm out and about, end up coming home, getting ready to get out and seeing that I forgot the ice. And 99.9% .9 of me wanted to walk inside that house. I'm like, babe, I forgot the ice. You know I mean, I go get you some ice out the refrigerator and put it in the blender and crush it up for you or something. But I ain't going back outside. I'm tired. It's over with. But what did I do? I got back in my truck. I didn't even let them know that I was even outside at the house. I got back in my truck, rode all the way back to Sunny, got her ice and came back like nothing never happened. And she, oh, thank you so much, babe. I've been waiting on it. And I said, oh, you so welcome, babe. If you only knew the sacrifice I just made to go get that ice for you. <laughs> so you have to sacrifice not only in big things but also in small things because you have to understand husbands all the wives love the big things there are certain times where the small things have a greater impact than the big things i am talking good and dropping knowledge already who am i talking to already 
So you have to be willing to sacrifice yourself for her. Uh, sacrifice uh, your will. Sacrifice your pride. Sacrifice your feelings. Sacrifice how you feel at times for the sake of the wife. To keep her in a good mood. To keep her right. To keep her in right standing. To keep the marriage in right standing. Every man want the authority, but we don't want the assignment. That's part of the assignment. Philippians 2 7 says that Christ, that he was, that he didn't consider himself to be, that look what it says in Philippians 2 7. This is what it says about Christ. It says that um it says that in Philippians 2 7, it talks about how Christ emptied himself of his deity. It says that Christ was in equality with God, but he emptied all of his deity, all of his attributes that made him God the Son, all of his attributes that made him the Word. Uh, the Bible says he, he emptied himself of who he was as God and became like a servant. So husbands, the one reason that most men walk around full of their ego and full of their pride because they haven't embraced the process of emptying themselves Husbands, Christ emptied himself, taking the role of a servant. Husbands, we have to empty ourselves. Taking the role of a servant, because in Matthew 23, 11, the Bible says the greatest among you shall also be your servant. So, 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 so men, you, you know, most men, we want to be great, but we don't want to serve. You have to understand that the two is compat compatible. If you want to be great in the eyes of your wife, show yourself to be a servant. Although you are the head, show yourself to be a servant. That's what Jesus did. Well, I ain't Jesus. I don't know. Yeah, but the same spirit that was in Jesus is now within you. So we have no excuse. It's easier said than done, but it is possible. You got. You just got to have to want the, the will and the strength to be able to do that thing. So the Bible says that Christ gave himself up for the church. Husbands, we got to love our wives like Christ loved the church. Sacrifice, emptying ourselves. What, and what did uh, the atonement work of Christ do for the church? It restored, reconciled, and redeemed us back to God. Husbands, you have to be willing to pinpoint everything in your wife's life that needs restored, redeemed, and reconciled. Who? See, y'all thought it was all about just going to the 9 to 5 and making sure there's some bread and bologna in the house. No, this thing is a full-blown job. This thing is a full-blown assignment, and it ain't cut out for the weak at heart. You got to be strong, and you got to be willing to be able to embrace the process of being a man. Just as Christ restored, reconciled, and redeemed the, the, the bride, the wife, back to God, husbands, anything in your wife's life that needs to be restored, reconciled, and redeemed, you now responsible for doing that thing. She might have had a broken relationship with her father growing up. Husband, you come into her life right now, she still might have a little, little sensitivity in that area. It's now time for you to restore that area by showing her how to truly be the man in her life. She might have some dreams that then got broken up that she then separated from. It's now time for you to come and restore and reconcile her back to the dream she once had before she even met you. You have to understand the testimony of your wife should be this. I am now better with you than I am without you. Now, if her testimony is I was better without you than I am with you, husbands, you got some work to do. <laughs> you got some work cut out on your hands, boy. Who am I talking to right now? My wife, one thing that she often tells me, we just be talking about life and, you know, if if this would happen, this would happen. Uh, she, she she often says, babe, you know, if if something was to happen to you, I, I, I'll go crazy. I don't know what I'll do. That just make me feel so good. That make me want to go give her a million dollar check right now if I did have it. That'll make a mess. That make me run through ten brick walls and twenty and twenty concrete walls. Who am I talking to right now? She be like, baby, I don't know what I'll do without you. You, you, this, uh, 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 uh taking care of the girls, taking care of me. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know what I'll do without you. I'll go crazy. I wouldn't make it. That is the testimony that I'm on the right track on being the great husband that she need me to be. So husbands, anything in your wife's life that needs to be restored, redeemed, and reconciled, you should be working to accomplish that goal and mission in her life. Ephesians 5, verse 26. Now, why did it say Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her? 
so that he may sanctify the church, her, the bride, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word of God, so that in turn he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy, set apart, and blameless. Look what it says. Woo! And this is my last point I'm going to make because I'm already at 20 minutes and I got so much more to show. It says that Christ gave himself up for the church. Why? So that he may sanctify the church, cleansing her and presenting her to himself in a glorious splendor. The word sanctify means to set apart. Christ gave himself up for the church. He loved the church so much in a way so that he can set the church apart. Husbands, we need to love our wives so much in a great way that we sanctify her, that she needs to be set apart. What am I saying? We need to love our wives in such a way that she is set apart from any of the person in the world. She is set apart from any of the thing in the world. Who am I talking to right now? Prophet Watts, well, well, man, I hear you, but how do I set my wife apart? You have to understand, how do you sanctify your wife? How do you set her apart? Nothing or no one comes before her except for God Almighty. I don't care if the angel Gabriel come down. I don't care if the arch archangel Michael come down. Nothing or no one comes before your wife. Not your kid. Not your brother. Not your sister. Not your pet dog Rocky in the back. Not even the dog. Nothing or no one comes before your wife. And let me throw this out there too. Not even your mama. Yeah, I'm getting ghetto and country on you. Not mother, but mama. M-O-M-M-A. Not even your mama should come before your wife. That's how you set your wife apart. That's how you sanctify your wife. She's set apart because only one person come above her, and that's God Almighty. You have to understand your wife wants to have the assurance and the security to know that you have sanctified her, that you have set her apart. In her mind, she needs to know, and she can have the testimony to say, I know without a shadow of a doubt that he that don't nobody come before me in that man's life but God. That's how you set her apart. She is your priority. I don't care where I'm at. If my wife call, I'm answering the phone. And if I can't get the answer, I'm texting while whoever it is I'm talking to talking. I tell them, hey, a, 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 a quick minute, quick minute. Let me let me check on my wife real quick. Nothing or nobody comes before my wife, not even my daughters. We be at the house oftentimes, and, and, and I go to my wife and start hugging on and just living on her, and my girls will try to run in in between and try to hug me. I'm like, no, I push them out the way. No, you get back and you watch me love on your mom. You'll get your loving later on. Nothing or no one should come before your wife, not your mama, not her mama, not your friends, not no sports, not no hobbies, not nothing should come before your wife. Every man want the authority, but very few want to take on that assignment. And he said he sanctified her that she might be clean and that he can present her to himself in glorious splendor. When you present something to you in glorious splendor, oh baby, that thing is almost sacred. You best believe whatever is gonna be glorious and splendor in your life is gonna be set apart. And your wife cannot walk around in a glorious splendor state if in her mind she knows that she haven't been set apart. Who am I talking to? Your wife should be walking out in Walmart with the utmost swag and confidence because she knows she's set apart. Because she knows that in the life of one person, ain't nobody greater than her. Man, I'm at 23 minutes and 45 seconds. I got to close this thing out. I got so much I want to talk to you husbands about. But for the day, we just going to stick right here in Ephesians 5. That was verse 25 through 26. So let's do a quick recap. We talked about husbands. Starting off, most men, they think just because they're providing, which is part of your job, is much more than just providing. It's much more than just working a 9 to 5 and paying a $163 light bill and make sure it's bread, bologna, and oatmeal in the fridge. No, it's a full-blown assignment when it comes to taking care of your wife. Most men say, man, she, one, of, one of the problems that most men say is she just won't submit to me. Most women don't have a problem with submission. They have a problem with you being slothful. You got to give her something to submit to. If she don't have nothing to submit to, then what is she going to submit to? You think she just want to submit to you just for submission's sake? Now, although according to the word, she still should submit to you. 
but you got to give her something to submit to. Have a vision in place. Have a direction in place. Let her know that you're working on something that's going to take y'all to the greatest life possible. Who is the prophet talking to right now? Ephesians 5 said Christ loved, that we should love our wives as Christ loved the church. He gave himself up for her. He sacrificed himself. He emptied himself. He redeemed, restored, and reconciled us. Anything in your wife's life that needs to be redeemed, restored, and reconciled, you should be working on it or have at least some of it accomplished. Broken relationships, uh, insecurities. Um, hey, babe, I'm almost done, babe. Mate, babe, no, 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 I'm almost done, y'all. See, I'm being a good husband right now. I got to go pick my girls up, 202. I got five minutes. Babe, let me go. I, I got it. I'm, I'm closing out right now. Am I preaching good? Just, just say yes so the people can hear you. Come on. There you go, y'all. There you go. You got to restore, redeem, and reconcile anything in your life that needs to be redeemed, restored, and reconciled. You got to be the king, the priest, the prophet, the, protect, the protector, the provider, and cultivator. The Bible says Christ loved, that we should love our wives as Christ loved the church, sacrificing himself for her, sanctifying her. You sanctify your wife. You set her apart. Nothing or no one should come before her. So she can walk in that glorious and that splendor knowing that she is all in all in the eyes of one person. That is you. So I hope today was a great video for the husbands. I hope you was encouraged by this. I'm still working on me as well. Uh, ladies, if you're married and you're about to get married, you know, share the video with your husband. Not, not in a way of trying to tell him, see, this is how you should be. Do what you should be. No, 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 not in a way. But hey, babe, I think you should watch this. I believe it could help us in our marriage. And there's going to be more videos coming out for the wives as well. But today, just all about the husband. So I hope you was encouraged by this. You know, we say this isn't the beginning. This is forever together. This is not another. I got to go get my girls, y'all. I got to go fulfill my husband duties. This isn't the beginning. This is forever together. This is not another. Dream, be, and work, hard, live easy. We'll see y'all next time for part two of uh, walking in the role of being a husband. All right? Peace.